So first up, let's look at our contact centre solution and what is included. Um, like I said earlier, 3CX does offer a multi-channel contact centre solution. And that's really so that we can give our customers the flexibility to choose the method of contact that best suits their needs. So agents can communicate that way really effectively and really efficiently with customers across multiple channels. And the great thing is that they still only have that one um, user-friendly interface. So pretty much everything is done from the 3CX web client. Now we did used to, or we actually still do have a number of our contact center features available on the Windows client as well. But my advice to you would be that for new installs going forward, um, we are going to build more of the enterprise features into the web client. So do try and push them in that direction if you can. So the core components of our contact solution then, um, or indeed any of our competitors as well, are the warboard, call queues, um, and call flows, which kind of sit quite nicely together. Agent training, of course, um, we need to be mindful of how we bring new agents up to speed. And then our live chat feature, which can be embedded into um, websites or social media to enable customers to contact you kind of on their own terms. And what I'm gonna do now is look at each in a little bit more detail, starting with our wallboard. So what our wallboard basically does is enables call center supervisors to track their team's performance against any KPIs that might be set and monitor um, SLAs. So it gets current call stats based on what's happening in real time on the switchboard. Um, so that will update pretty much minute by minute. And when you look at our wall board, if you're a member of one queue, you will only see the statistics for that queue. The crucial thing is if you're a member of multiple queues, all those statistics are going to be added together by default. So you will see them as a combination um, if you're a manager that manages multiple teams. And you'll see in the picture on the left hand side of the screen, um, the statistics include the following. So we have the average talk time, which is the total average talking time for all serviced calls. Then we can quickly see the number of answered calls, the number of abandoned calls or unanswered calls, um, the number of agents that are busy answering calls at any one time, and then the total number of calls combined. So you can see exactly what's coming in and out of your call center. And as well in that top um, right hand corner of your wall board, your queue managers can leave um, a nice motivational message to their teams. So you can change the name if you want. So if you want to write 3CX sales team, whatever it might be, um, and a little quip. So perhaps um, a lot of contact centers, they run competitions throughout the day based on number of calls taken, number of outbounds made and so on. Um, so it's a really nice way to kind of engage staff. And in a future service pack um, that we release, we will be introducing a leaderboard. I know it's been talked about for a little while now, but it is being worked on. Um, and that will then enable you to rank agents alongside each other and just kind of enhance that sense of competition between the team. Now, if you are a queue manager and you have um, you are monitoring your team on the wall board, one thing that I would say is a really useful feature that sometimes gets missed as well is if you go to our wall board, um, by default, it just shows within your web client, but there is a button in the top right hand corner but you can actually pop it out as well and just have it sitting there in the corner of your screen. So that's a really good, just quick kind of tip bit to give your clients because what they can then do is focus on another task or a bigger piece of work, but also constantly be monitoring their agents on the phone to make sure that everything is happening um, or kind of according to plan and everything is staying on track. And then behind that wall board, um, and really the crux of any contact center is having an organized and efficient queuing system. So I'm going to explain how queuing works um, with 3CX now. So if you are slightly newer in the room, and I know when I did my poll at the start, actually we are heavy on people that have been with us um, under a year today. So a call queue basically places incoming calls in a line to be answered. So while your extension users are busy or your agents are busy with other calls, those callers get placed in a queue, and that's when if you've called a contact center, you are typically sat listening to the music on hold. So with 3CX, um, we do obviously have 3CX music on hold by default, um, so you can opt to use that. 
or you can customize it and use virtually any track you want. Um, I've seen some really nice integrations actually where people have connected to things like Spotify and had little mixtapes going. That's a really nice feature if you've got the capabilities in house to do it. Um, and the core, core kind of difference between a core queue and a ring group, which is worth mentioning as well, um, is that when you're in a queue, obviously you do sit and wait to have your phone call answered. Whereas if you put your agents in a ring group, our system will then basically poll them once. And then after they've been polled once or they've been called once, if there's no answer, that call is going to get transferred to the destination that you set if it's not answered. So effectively, what will probably happen is that call will be made and it will go to voicemail afterwards, which isn't brilliant um, if you want to be um, obviously servicing as many calls as possible, making as many sales as possible and boosting your revenue. So call queues are essential if you are dealing with contact centers. And with 3CX, agents do have the ability to log themselves in and out of call queues um, by default. So that's worth mentioning. So um, a lot of you will be familiar with our web client. In the top right hand corner, there's just a little queue symbol and it will glow blue if you are logged into your call queue. But by default, you can click on that uh, and it goes gray. And that means that you're out of your call queues. Now, if you don't want this to happen, what you can do is set the login log out to be automated according to their shifts and break times, which is really useful. One, just to engage your agents, keep them on track and keep them on schedule. But two, so that you know exactly how many people you've got staffing their phones at any one time. And then once they are logged into that queue, calls are distributed to the agents as they become available based on the polling strategy that you select. So we do have 13 different polling strategies in 3CX, so I haven't summarized them all, but we are indexed really effectively on Google. So if you do just Google 3CX polling strategies, you'll get the full list with all the descriptions. Um, but some key and kind of common ones that I wanted to just pull out and explain are prioritized hunts. So prioritized hunt will basically always poll the first available agent in the list, and then it will work its way down the list of agents until someone answers the call, quite straightforward. You can then hunt by threes, which effectively does the same thing, but it will poll the first three agents in the list all at once. Um, then you can move on to a round robin, which is particularly effective if you want to distribute your calls evenly amongst your staff members. So a round robin will basically remember which agent answered the call last. And then on the next call, it will begin polling from the next agent in the list. So that's obviously really good because it prevents any one of your agents um, from being kind of inundated with calls. And then the final one I wanted to call out was skills based routing, because this becomes a really nice upsell opportunity if you do introduce um, skills based routing to your clients, because it's one of our enterprise features. And what skills based routing basically does is enables you to set a special skill area for your agents. So if, say, you called 3CX support and you are a German speaker, um, you might on our IVR select that you're a German speaker and then our system would try and connect you to an agent that spoke German and English first, because obviously they want to try and talk to you in your native language. And then if you're not available, that agent isn't available, it might just connect you to an agent who speaks English only. So obviously not as ideal for your personal situation, um, but still someone that you can talk to and is still better than you having to abandon that call because you've not been answered. And if a caller doesn't want to wait in a queue at all, which is obviously quite common, I'm sure we've all been on the phone or trying to get through to the bank or something and it's taken us a hell of a long time to hear a person on the phone, um, then you can enable our callback feature. So basically if you press two, by default, at any point during a call, um, you're going to be requesting a callback and that will then um, put you into a list that agents can access to be followed up with at a later time. And then alongside call queues, call flows are probably the second most important tool um, in terms of designing how that contact center system is actually going to flow. And a call flow is basically a map for how your incoming calls are going to be handled. So the right call flows, if you um, have them in place, will allow your customers to do things like automate any repetitive tasks that they might have. 
um, which will save them time and improve customer experience. I was actually writing an article for our blog um, earlier this week on kind of the impact of IVRs on customer experience. Um, and something that was really interesting that I learned that I didn't know before was that actually 51% of consumers, um, this is in the US, have completely moved away from a business because they've had a frustrating experience with an IVR. So that's the sole reason for them to choose to go elsewhere, basically. So having your core flows um, in place and working to meet your customers' needs rather than kind of a business need is really, really important if you are dealing in contact centers. So the 3CX Core Flow Designer is a downloadable application. It's separate to our management console. And basically what that enables you to do is create these custom core flows for your clients. Um, and it doesn't require massive amounts of scripting experience. What I would say um, is it does take a few hours for you to get to learn to use our call center application properly. Um, so do dedicate some time to this and then you will reap the rewards afterwards. We actually have some partners out there that are making secondary income purely from designing call flows for other partners that haven't spent the time learning to do this. So um, brilliant for them, but why not try and bring that revenue in-house um, and have that complementing your license fees? Some example call flows that you can create then are things like um, callback scheduling. So if you want that to be automatic, you could use our call flow designer to do that. You could implement a um, voice payment gateway, which is basically helps um, call center agents to take compliant payments over the phone. And if you combine that with our stop and start call recording feature, um, which I will talk to you about in a little bit more detail later, that will basically enable you to have compliant payments. Um, you'll also be able to validate things like um, customer ID numbers within a database um, internally. So you could query someone's account number when they phone up to draw up their details. Or for example, at 3CX, we might query your partner level to make sure that you are a partner and can reach us on the phone. Oh, and of course, outbound dialing as well. Sorry, I forgot that one, but that's a question we get asked all the time is um, can 3CX outbound dial? Um, and we can, if you can configure it with our call center at Coreflow application, and effectively what the outbound dialer would then do is plow through big data sheets of numbers that you input um, and it would then um, randomly call those numbers until someone picks up and then connect that call to an available agent. So very good if you've got um, kind of outbound contact centers or contact centers that do a lot of uh, cold calling. Now, does anybody remember this episode of Friends? Um, people who have come to my webinars before will probably know by now that I tend to use a lot of examples from Friends. Um, but in this episode, Phoebe basically takes a job at a call centre. Um, I think she has to sell printer toner. And pretty much the first question that she asks when she gets on the phone to the customer is, what's toner? So not a fantastic um, experience for the customer or for her in that situation. And if she'd had some of our training features to hand, that whole situation would have been avoided. So um, we know that it's really important for call centers to have their agents perfectly versed by the time they actually get on the phones. And that's why we've got built-in listening, whisper and barge features available in our pro and enterprise licenses. Um, and what each of those does, I will just run through now. So listen in basically allows supervisors to listen um, to agents' calls without detection or vice versa. So your new um, agent could listen to the supervisor's calls um, and get really good examples of best practice, um, see things like objection handling in real life so that they can then take that as feed it into their own role. Whisper can also be used by supervisors to give prompts to new agents. So similar to listening in, they'll be able to hear the call, but they'll also be able to speak to the um, recipient that has the extension number without the other caller being able to hear. And then we have barging, which can be used um, if you hear a conversation going totally downhill. 
and you feel like you need to interrupt and kind of set the record straight, so that basically lets you take over a call. And customers as well, um, this is a training feature that sometimes gets overlooked, but they might want to take advantage of our stop and start call recording, which is another enterprise feature. So that's another kind of upsell conversation for you to have. But by default, um, when a 3CX Pro license gives you call recording, anyone, any agent on that system can turn recording on and off. If you don't want that to happen, which some contact centers won't want to happen because um, particularly with new agents, they'll want to be monitoring what they're saying, then the enterprise stop and start lets a queue manager actually remove that privilege from an agent whilst they're training or perhaps if there's just another reason that that would need to be taken away. So do think about that and how it could be useful in helping you to upsell. And then the final feature that I wanted to talk to you about, and then I will have a quick scan through the questions because I know that there's quite a lot coming in. Um, but the final feature that I wanted to just kind of introduce you to is the live chat feature. So this was introduced for version 16, um, basically because we know that nowadays consumers are looking for multiple ways to connect to the brands um, and services that they use. So what they're actually trying to do quite often is connect in ways that mirror their communications in their private lives. So obviously we're all using things like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp in our private lives. Um, we know that that's a super easy way to connect with our friends. So why can't we connect with a brand in that same way? So that's where 3CX Live Chat comes in. And it's effectively a WordPress plugin that enables visitors to your customers' websites to chat with their agents in real time. So that has a number of benefits, both for the customer and for your clients. Obviously, it's more convenient. Um, it's faster for your customer. There is no call charges. And for you, there are no call charges either because the technology is all based on WebRTC. And even if you choose to elevate that chat to a call, which is one of the really unique things about our chat, that call is conducted over WebRTC. So there are no call costs whatsoever. Our live chat feature is included in every single edition of 3CX free of charge. So we didn't charge for it, um, like many of our competitors who can charge pretty much. I know in the UK, this can be £15 per user per month, uh, which is quite a lot when you think about the fees that you're paying on for your existing phone system anyway. So big selling point for 3CX and is something that we should be talking about. And like I said, what's really unique about our live chat is that you can start chatting and then choose to elevate to a call with the same agent if things get a little bit complicated. So that really helps you clarify details or explain maybe a complicated support issue. And it gives the customer a really seamless journey because they're not having to go back into a call queue when they want to call and then speak to an agent who doesn't have the details. They're speaking to someone who's already gone through that initial conversation with them and it makes it really fast um, to pick up and resolve any issues. So now I am going to pause to just have a quick scan through the um, questions just to see what's going on. I know there are a few questions coming in with sound. So all I'm going to say is um, that there will be a recording. I'm recording it now. We will pop it on YouTube and everybody will get an email um, that comes out just with that link so that you can go back through and work in your own time. Uh, there's a question about also updating the warboard. Um, yes, that is something that has been talked about, um, both in terms of making it a little bit more visually kind of friendly and also in adding additional options there. But I would say, obviously, the Ideas Forum is a really good place to start upvoting. So please do find there is an existing post on there um, and just upvote it if it is important to you. Um, Philip's asked, are there limits to the skill groups that an agent can belong to? If you're talking about skills based routing, no, you would designate them yourself. Um, so it would depend on the particular queue as to which order you obviously wanted. But if you've got multiple skill groups for or if you've got an agent in multiple queues, they can be in different skill groups for each queue and so on. Um, people that are asking for links to blogs, we've had some um, very kind friends, actors um, and otherwise post the links. So that's fantastic. 
and then I will keep coming back to the questions every now and then but for now just to make sure we keep on time we're going to move on to 3CX integrations so most of you will know already that 3CX is open standards so basically that means you can connect virtually any piece of kit that you like to 3CX and it will work providing you can support that integration yourself and the same goes for CRMs and PMS systems which are both really essential tools um, for contact centers when they are handling things like sales, um, bookings, or offering support. So if you connect your CRM, basically what it would do is help your agents have the information about their callers to hand as soon as possible, let you instantly log any transactions and keep that record for you without you having to manually update um, a separate system, which is obviously very time consuming for agents. Um, and quite difficult as well if you're having to constantly navigate between different platforms when you're on the phone. Um, we have four different ways of integrating or four different options, which I've listed on the screen. So the first one is obviously to use one of our supported systems, which we would certainly recommend, um, and connect using a PMP guide or a plug and play guide that we've been able to test in-house with our quality teams. So. Most of the leading CRMs and PMS systems are listed, but obviously we know um, it's a market that's actually just rapidly proliferating. So it is um, very hard to keep on track of all the new CRMs that are popping up, which is why we have our um, next option, which is to use the 3CX CRM template generator, which we introduced again with version 16. And basically um, what that does is lets you connect any RESTful API, so a CRM with a RESTful API, to 3CX. And it's a free tool that's available. You do need a pro license, um, but for you guys as partners, you should have access. And it requires really just basic knowledge of programming to use. So you don't need to have an, a really extensive kind of team of developers in-house. Um, you can get on with that if you just read the documentation, have that kind of, I'd say, grounding and then dedicate a few hours to it. Um, we did also, so the fourth option is create your own. Um, if you have developers in-house, you can obviously build your own integration from scratch. And we have many people out there that are doing this already. One thing that I would say is that the APIs are being worked on. Um, and it's a question that we get asked all the time because we um, moved to IPv6 and that did um, impact the, uh, earlier API versions that we had available. So um, you'll notice the documentation is not online right now. Don't panic, it is coming back. And now I'm going to talk about the bit that I probably get asked about the most, which is call reporting. Um, and I got asked about this a lot yesterday in the webinar as well. So call reporting, obviously, really important for any kind of contact center environment your queue managers are gonna to want to know how long their agents are spending on the phone, how many inbound and outbound calls they're making um, and also receiving and how those queues are performing. So how they're working and how they're impacting customer experience. Now, our inbuilt reports try to answer these questions. There are over 30 to choose from. Um, and then with the filtering options, there are many more combinations. But broadly speaking, they can be split into two camps. So first, we have quality of service reports. And they're basically any reports that help key managers check the experience of customers that dial in. So that's things like callback reporting, SLA breaches, um, and wait time reports. And I will show you as well um, some examples of how these reports uh, present both as graphs and tables in a minute. And then the second category that we have are performance reports. So they're basically used to monitor the agents whilst they're at work and identify um, high achievers or maybe people that are taking it a little bit too easy and you just need to get that flagged. So performance reports include agent activity, um, extension reports, talk time and call distribution. Um, so there is plenty of data that you can get there. And basically what those reports will enable your customers to do is to have really clear conversations with their agents um, about what they're doing well, what they're doing better, and identify targets that will help them um, just achieve more in their day-to-day -day job. 
So as I said earlier, reports can be extracted as data or many of them also as graphs. So I'm going to show you just a few examples now so you get the feel for how they look. Um, here on the screen, we've got a user activity graph which shows answered versus unanswered calls for a single agent in the month of um, January, I think it is. And you'll see that it's really quick to digest. Um, as a queue manager, you can pinpoint days where the agent overperformed or perhaps where they struggled really easily. So example, you can see here um, that kind of midway through the month, the agent was doing really well. The answered call rate shot up and it's highest it was all month, leaving very few unanswered. Um, then the week after, we're seeing a lot more unanswered calls. Um, so as a queue manager, then you can instantly see that and instantly pick up on the difference and perhaps just have a conversation to see if there's anything going on um, with that agent that is impacting their ability to work. I know there are loads of questions coming in as well. Um, so I will pause at the end of this section. And the one thing I would say is please bear in mind that I'm not a technical colleague, so I will not be answering any technical questions. Um, and I will just tell you to go and contact support who are there to help. But do keep the sales and marketing ones coming. Um, and then the second report that I want to show you, just get ourselves back on track, is an average wait time graph. So you'll see that this one presents as a line graph and it shows you the times um, callers spend waiting before A, Either an agent answers the call, which is represented in blue at the bottom, um, or before the recipient hung up, which is obviously what you don't want to be happening. And that's marked in orange. And again, it's really easy here just visually to pick up on any spikes and dips that you might have and identify where agents might be overstretched. So, for example, this is showing you a whole year and you can see here that there's an incredible spike that happens kind of in November. So if you're a call centre, perhaps um, you're thinking this is in the lead up to Christmas, online calls going up, there's a higher call volume. Do you need to get extra staff on the books to help you through those periods? So just a really nice way of helping you to plan. And obviously the graphs are brilliant, um, but when you really want to start getting into the numbers, you do need to have access to the hard data. So here's an example of a data extraction. I think this would have been an XTML or something like that for agents in a single queue. Um, and again, really clear, really easy to read and gives you all the information that you need to check your team's performance um, against one another. So, for example, you can see here um, things like the total time they've been logged in for, how many calls they take, total ring time and talk time. So you can see, for example, here, if you look at talk time, you've got two agents that are doing quite well here. You've got 22, 21, um, but then you've got a few here really low. So that's when you would start having those conversations um, and seeing what's going on. So lots of conversations um, coming on, uh, sorry, lots of questions coming in about the recording. This will be recorded, so don't panic. Um, and then there's also questions coming in about the call flow designer and where the training is for it. So call flow designer doesn't have a formal training process, so it's not part of our basic intermediate and advanced. Um, you would need to read the documentation and just spend a few hours playing with it. I have done this before and I'm definitely not a technical colleague, but I've been able to um, produce basic call flows for my kind of dummy PBX that I use on my own with next to no training. So it really is just about dedicating the hours and um, reaching out to support if you do need help with particular tasks. I think some of our distributors as well, I might add, do run call flow training. So do contact your regional distributor if that is something that you'd be interested in. And then my uh, fourth and final section to touch on is as I said at the start obviously a lot of us are working from home right now so we're going to touch on um, how we can help our contact centres cope with the change to remote working so it's on the rise obviously a lot of us are doing it right now um, I have been doing my webinars from my balcony which is lovely uh, but only if you have the right kit to do so and 
I don't know how many of you are actually aware, but a lot of our competitors and kind of big name contact center providers are actually charging agents extra or kind of companies extra to give their agents the ability to work remotely. So there's either an additional per user per month fee or there's an activation fee. Now, with 3CX, it's obviously very different because you can work remotely free of charge from pretty much day one. So um, in my mind, there's there's no real reason to pay more. And all they need is that extension number and password to log into the soft phone. So 3CX web client, obviously the way to go, literally just pop it into your browser, um, put your password in and away you go. And they've got access to all the communications tools that they have in the office. So they will be managing everything then from that one simple interface, really quick to set up at home. Um, and that brings benefits because obviously they're not having to faff around logging into VPN. Um, there's very low security risks because you are literally logging into the secure web client and that's it. And that will then do everything for you, be it your live chats, your calls. Um, and if you're a queue manager, reporting on your call stats and the warboards. They can bring their device with them as well. So um, they don't need to take any tech home from the office if they don't want to. So what we would recommend for kind of call center agents is obviously to use a supported Sennheiser headset with their web client for optimum home working. And I say that purely because Sennheiser is um, the only headset manufacturer that is supported um, and fully kind of qualified by 3CX at the moment. But you could also, if you're a queue manager, just get on your 3CX mobile app and have a look. Um, the recent iOS has just come out in its um, beta form and we are now video calling from it if you haven't seen. So that's really exciting. Um, so, yeah, get them on a Sennheiser headset or a mobile app. And if queue managers are worried about agents not being as productive at home, remember that those leaderboards um, and kind of warboard reports can be generated on their own terms. So you can have them coming in daily, uh, weekly, even down to the hour if you really want to. So you can constantly be monitoring agents throughout the day um, and have them those reports delivered to your email. So it's really easy for you to pick them up. Now, if we just quickly talk about licensing, because obviously I've touched on a lot of features here. And when you're talking to your customers, you want to be clear to them about what they need to purchase. Um, so the key really is that they do need to have a pro or an enterprise license. You'll see really clearly on the screen that your standard is not going to give you the contact center functionality that you want. You won't even have access to core queues. So you might want to give them a standard as a trial because obviously they're free just to let them have a look at what the web client looks like, familiarize themselves with the interface, but then to get access to things like live chat, reporting, warboards and the like, they are going to need a pro. And then you'll see at the bottom there, your two upsell opportunities uh, that specifically relate to contact centers are your skills-based routing and your stop and start call recording, which are incredibly useful, both of them actually for contact centers. So don't underestimate them. And on the right, obviously I said earlier, but just to really hammer it home, um, we're not gonna charge them extra to go remote. Everybody needs it right now. There is, um, we should be doing this for them. So it will be included in the license that they purchase. And then um, just before I finish up, finally, just want to point out that there are loads of case studies available. Um, the ones on the screen will mean different things to different people around the world. Um, but if you look at our case studies on our website, there are plenty to choose from. And these are perhaps useful because we've got a lot of newer partners in the room. If you don't have the experience just yet and you haven't done one of these installs before, um, they will give you real life examples of how 3CX contact centers are working for large companies um, worldwide, really. And then the idea is uh, use them to get the first one under your belt and then you get your own case studies, send them to us um, and we will publish them on our blog. So um, do let us know, do let your channel manager know if you have any healthy sized installs coming your way and we will do our best to shout about them. And then to finish up, just going to focus on kind of the four takeaways from today. So why your customers should be choosing the 3CX contact center solution over anything else. Um, one thing that we cannot avoid talking about is obviously that we are a lot less. Not only are we not gonna charge them to go remote, but we're also gonna be less to start with. 
So typically, we are um, up to 80% less than our competitors. And I was in sales in a past life, and I have seen us knock tens of thousands of pounds off people's phone bills. So it really does happen. Um, so do talk to them about the cost benefits. Obviously, no hidden charges. We've got that one user-friendly platform for all channels. Um, and then we have market leading features. So things like the live chat, um, which really was the first to let you do that seamless elevation to a call. We are pushing the boundaries and we are going to be investing heavily in our contact center solution, um, kind of with future releases and future versions of 3CX. Uh, 